Good afternoon, my name is Dave Norton from Discovering New England History. We're going to continue on here with part two of the Great Locomotive Chase, which of course happened out in uh, Georgia and Tennessee, and also had uh, a couple of New England players that we're talking about here in this, uh, this whole story. And it's really the story about uh, Private Robert Buffum, who was a Union soldier, and how he won the uh, Medal of Honor during this raid. So we'll go to the first slide. Okay, if you remember from last story, they, they, uh, the group of uh, Andrews Raiders, all dressed in civilian clothes, on this special raid deep into the south, and they made it across the Cumberland Mountains from Shelbyville, Tennessee to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they had to do it in 100 miles in three days on foot. And they all made it to uh, the Confederate-held uh, Chattanooga. And we'll go to the next slide. And this is the picture of the uh, station at uh, Chattanooga where they repaired all the trains. It was a, quite a uh, railroad center in the south. And what they did is they all had different tickets that they, they purchased to go south towards, uh, towards the Atlanta area. And you can see over there on the right, that's one of the actual tickets that was issued by the Western and Atlantic Railroad back in the day. So all the Raiders boarded the, uh, the last southbound train and they were headed all down to Marietta, Georgia. And they were all dressed in civilian clothes. So uh, technically and actually, they are actually uh, considered spies and they're going deep 140 miles <laughs> down deep into a Confederate uh, held territory behind enemy lines. So we'll go to the next slide. And there's a picture of James Andrews. He was a civilian, he was a Union spy. And of course he knew everything about the South. He went, uh, was spying for the Union, going down the South, come back to the North. That, so he knew all the areas very well. And Robert Buffum, a Union soldier from Salem, Massachusetts. And that's a picture of the train with the passenger cars. So all these, uh, soldiers were on the passenger cars. Um, actually, <laughs> when they came on the train, they were loaded with Confederate soldiers, so they had to sit with the uh, Confederate soldiers, which were going down towards Atlanta to regroup. You, you can imagine the, uh, the nerve it took to do this. We'll go to the next slide. And this is the route. I put together a Union plan. I'll call it Phase 1. If you take a look at the red, that's uh, General Mitchell, Union Army. He was up in Nashville, and he was going to make it all the way down to, in the red line, you can follow it down, Huntsville, Alabama, capture Huntsville, Alabama. That was his idea. He didn't want to capture, go straight on and capture Chattanooga, which is his ultimate objective, because Chattanooga, they could get reinforced real, real easily. If you take a look on the, uh, on the map in the bottom uh, right-hand corner, Atlanta, if you went to Chattanooga, then all of a sudden, all the soldiers down the Atlanta area could just pile on the trains, train after train, and head north towards Chattanooga. And he would probably get crushed trying to capture Chattanooga. So instead, they had this uh, secret raid headed by James Andrews. And there's the Green Line. They left Shelbyville, Tennessee, and they made it all, all the way down. And you can see how they made it all the way down to Marietta, Georgia. Here we go to the next slide. And this is actually there, uh, this picture. It's the uh, Dalton Depot. So the train's heading down, so it finally got into Georgia. And they stopped for breakfast. This is, this is a great story. Uh, we'll, we'll go to the next slide. And there's uh, William Buffum. Now, he, he never uh, lacked for nerve, according to uh, the research I did. And when they stopped at Dalton for breakfast, of course, the Union soldiers were really starved and wanted to eat. They all uh, uh, got out of the train and went inside the depot, and they had all these long tables set up. So you had to wait your turn to sit down at the table to get served. And Buffett was ready to, ready to eat. So they had a, a, a rebel officer, if you can believe that, Confederate officer. He sat down first and ate his breakfast, and Buffett was watching him, and then he, when he, as soon as he got up to leave, Buffett sort of got right under, right, right underneath his arm, almost pushed him away from his seat. You can imagine this, you're 100 miles away from uh, down enemy territory. He pushed his hands away and grabbed his seat to sit down. 
Now, all the rest of the Confederates that were there sitting in there looked at that, and that was their officer, of course, and they all got up and cheered, and they said, wow, a civilian, that was a great Yankee trick that he pulled on you. And, of course, they had no idea <laughs> that, that Robert Buffett was from Massachusetts, and he was a Union soldier in the in disguise, no idea. So Buffett thought that was that was pretty pretty neat. They all stood up and cheered him. And of course the rest of the Rangers didn't know. They they said, oh my gosh, you know, we're we're <laughs> they're, they're gonna give us away. And to top it all off, after he finished Buffett after, Buffett after he finished his breakfast, he went over to the uh, the union officer and said, you know, I, I carry this flask because Buffett is Buffum is is known for drinking whiskey all the time. He's and being quite uh, quite drunk in the afternoon. He said, I've emptied this out. How about filling this up for me? And the, uh, the, the rebel officer sort of laughed at it and filled up his flask <laughs> with, with some bourbon. <laughs> and the rebel went down, got on the train, sat in the seat. <laughs> it's, it, it's amazing how, re, how relaxed and how much nerve this, uh, this fellow had. We'll go to the next slide. Now the train passes, keeps on going south, passed through a town called Big Shanty. And James Andrews, of course, took a look at that and he was checking it out because that's, that's the station where they're going to capture a northbound train the next day. So the train didn't stop here, just kept on going through. And James Andrews couldn't believe it. He looked right across the tracks from the station all of a sudden, which he didn't realize, there was an entire Confederate Army camp, and it was estimated 4,000 rebel soldiers were camped out right next to the train depot. And those are some pictures there I took of the uh, rebel soldiers, and that was it. They were under Confederate General Phillips. And James Andrews, was, of course, was very cool, whatever. He looked at that, and if he was really uh, going to change his plans or whatever, he saw no indication, uh, didn't tell anybody about it. The tra train just kept on going south. So now he said this, this could be a problem. The reason they chose in Big Shanty was it did not have a telegraph line there. So if they sold the train, there's no way that the uh, Confederates could uh, use the telegraph and telegraph to the next station and perhaps get all the Confederates to block the train. So he just continued on. And we'll go to the next slide. And then they stopped at uh, Marietta, Georgia. And that place is still there. And there's a railroad tracks. It's called the Fletcher House. So the Raiders departed their train. And the idea was to get different rooms there, as many as you could, and get a good night's sleep and start early in the morning when the northbound train came up from Atlanta. So that's what they did. They all gathered in this uh, Fletcher House. And they all. Uh, Try to get a good night's sleep. So we'll go to the next slide. Now, we're going to go down to Atlanta and talk about the train that they're going to be capturing. This picture was taken in Atlanta, Georgia, 1862, actually the same time of the great locomotive chase. You can see Atlanta was not like, certainly not like it was today. You've got the dirt roads. You can see the covered wagons probably carrying materials or whatever for the Confederate Army. It was just filled with Confederate troops, and it was a big railroad center. That's a great picture, by the way. Um, we'll go to the next slide. So we're down in Atlanta, and you can see they call this the Atlanta Roundhouse. You can see all the tracks, all the different lines throughout the south all converged in at, uh, Atlanta. And you can see the boxcars on the tracks. And you can, over on the right, you can see what they call the Atlanta Roundhouse where they made all repairs for the trains. It was quite a, quite a place. This is where we're starting off. And we'll go to the next slide. And I've got a lot of these pictures of the roundhouse just because they, they give you an idea of the hustle and bustle here. Look at all the wagons there, all the... It, it, they were, of course, supplying the Confederacy. They were sending trains up with uh, soldiers and munitions and everything else up to Chattanooga all the time every day. And here they are, these group of uh, 20 soldiers, all uh, <laughs> down in Marietta, Georgia. <laughs> so we'll go to the next slide. And the general, the specifications. I wanted to put this together for you to get an idea. That was quite a locomotive. 
um, the fuel, of course, on all these locomotives was cordwood. And of course, they also needed water for the boiler to make the steam. And going up the line, it's 183 miles from Atlanta to Chattanooga, the final destination. Um, they had these different fill stations. And you better stop there and get extra wood and extra wire or water or else you're not going to make it up to uh, Chattanooga. And the fuel consumption, this, this I call fascinating. This train could go 35 miles on a cord of wood. And the engineers on the train, when they make the trip from Atlanta to Chattanooga, they didn't say how many miles, like I would say 138 miles. They said they distance is measured in how many cords that you would have in the locomotive. So it was called a five cord run. <laughs> and the maximum train, the train maximum speed could get up to 60 miles an hour. And uh, the picture on the right, you could see the, uh, here's the engine right here. And you can see how they take all the cord wood and they pour it and they would load it in the tender right, right behind the locomotive. You can see the, uh, uh, the water, water tanks um, and it would fill the, uh, the boiler on the steam. And that's typically how you would uh, operate this train. And the train here that we're talking about is called the General. We'll be refer referring to this train that they're going to be captured called as the General. And we'll go to the next slide. Once again, the General starts up. This is a great, great shot too. It's in the roundhouse and the conductor gets going here. He checks out the whole engine here. At four o'clock in the morning, uh, April 12th, 1862, and he starts his normal run going up from Atlanta to Chattanooga. And we'll go to the next slide. And there he is, William Fuller. We're going to talk about him a lot. He was the conductor of the general, the train. Leaves Atlanta April 12th, 1862. It was a mixed passenger and freight train. In other words, they had the uh, box cars for the freight and, of course, the passenger cars for the soldier. And the uh, departure time was 4 a.m. That's an actual picture of the, uh, the general. So we'll go to the next slide. And I put this together, distance from Atlanta. You can see the map. Atlanta's on the bottom and lower right uh, corner. And they're going to go through all these different uh, stations and stops, make their way all the way up north to Chattanooga. And we're going to tell this whole story of what happened at each one of these stops. You can see, if you go to the top of this chart here, Atlanta. So the train's going to leave Atlanta and go to first stop Marietta, Georgia. That's 20 miles. And then Big Chanty, that's Chanty, that's another uh, 28 miles. You can see all the distance. If they make it to Chattanooga, it's 138. So it's a five chord run. And we'll go to the next slide. Here's a picture of the general with the uh, passenger cars on it. And it head north. Now I put a map together here and circle the, uh, the depots to see where we are with the red line heading north now with William Fuller, the conductor. It's a Confederate train left from Atlanta. He's going to stop at Marietta and then stop for breakfast at Big Shanty. And we'll go to the next slide. Now I'm going to uh, read this. You can take a look on the screen here. This is actually what he, what he said uh, on the morning, next morning after they had a good night's sleep. Everyone got up and they all went into his, uh, Andrew's hotel room, gathered around, and he held his final meeting, Marietta, Georgia, right there in that uh, hotel. And this is basically what he said here, their instructions. Get seats near each other in the same passenger car. There were several passenger cars. When the train makes the big shanty breakfast stop, keep your places until I tell you to go. If anything unexpected happens, look to me for the lead. And of course, James Andrews was a very, very uh, strong leader. When everyone departs the train, in other words, when all the uh, Confederates and the passengers and the uh, locomotive engineers all leave the train to go for breakfast, we stay on the train, then we get off the train and uncouple the passenger cars and climb into the box cars. If anyone interferes, shoot them. Anyone not on board when the train starts will be left behind. 
and he basically said, if anyone thinks this mission is too hazardous, they can take the next train down to Atlanta and make their way north on other trains as best they can to get to Union lines. And the last sentence is really interesting, what he said to everyone. He said, boys, I tried this once before and failed. He tried a similar type of uh, uh, <clears throat> to go behind enemy lines, and it just failed miserably. And his last sentence here, now I will succeed or leave my bones in Dixie. And with that, they all left the room, went down a flight of stairs, and stood out here waiting for the train coming up from Atlanta. We'll go to the next slide. Now the general, which of course is the train, stops at Marietta. Now the time is 5.15 a.m. Andrews and 19 men board the train. Two raiders were left behind. These two, John Porter and Martin Hawkins, uh, there wasn't any more room in the hotel, so they stayed in another hotel right next to this one here. And for some reason, they didn't uh, tell the clerk or ever to uh, wake them up early in the morning, and they overslept. So they were left there, <laughs> John Porter and Martin Hawkins. Now, the, diff the problem there was Martin Hawkins was the most qualified train engineer that Andrews had. And he knew how to operate the trains and, and very, very qualified. And now here he is, he's left behind. And Andrew said, hey, if you're not ready on time, that's it, we go without you. And that's what they did. So we'll go to the next slide. So they did a breakfast shop at Big, uh, stop at Big Shanty, 20 minute stop, right on schedule. There's a general in front of uh, the hotel there, Big Shanty. And all the conductor and the engineers, they all got out, went in there to have a nice hot breakfast. Um, all the Confederates and whatever in the passenger cars all got out and they went inside. And as instructions, all the, uh, the Union uh, stayed inside the cars. Angels gave the signal and they got out of the uh, passenger cars. And of course, William Fuller now, he was the uh, conductor, picture on the right, he's inside having breakfast. So we'll go to the next slide. Now the, ra the Raiders seized the general, a big shanty. And right across the street was a Confederate Camp McDonald. <laughs> Un unbelievable. I mean, the, the, the courage or whatever. It, it said in actual accounts that they were only, the camp started only 20 feet away from the railroad tracks. And very calm and cool. They all uh, pulled us off, got in the boxcars, and uh, James Andrews with the two remaining engineers got up, up in the uh, locomotive and started it up. So we'll go to the next slide. Uh, these were the original uh, train engineers that Andrews had. Martin Hawkins, William Knight, and Wilson Brown. Now Knight and Brown now were the only two engineers left. Fortunately, they made it. And Martin Hawkins missed his train and he overslept. So the other story is, of course, he had, he had to make his way back with, with uh, Porter, Hawkins and Porter. Uh, <laughs> as best he could, and they, he got uh, captured by the Confederates. So we'll go to the next slide. And the Raiders uncouple a passenger car. Now this is a typical actual picture there. You can see on the left, that's what a passenger car would look like. They uncoupled them all. They didn't need those now. They wanted to just use the, uh, the box cars. And that's a typical uh, box cars of the um, Western Atlantic Railroad, which is on the uh, lower right corner. So the Raiders all piled in there, and they were ready to go. We'll go to the next slide. Now the general held, heads north. And it was really interesting, uh, I did some research on it. When they started the train up, everybody was in having breakfast, including the conductor and his crew. And all of a sudden, they heard the train start up. And all of a sudden, the conductor looked out and they said, hey, everybody expect, you know, talked to the conductor and said, someone, someone stole your train. <laughs> so he left his breakfast right there and ran out on the platform. And when the train started, of course, the Union engineers were so excited to get it going, they opened up the valve too quick, <laughs> and the wheels were just spinning. They were just sitting there. And you got, now you got 
right, uh, 400, uh, 4,000 Union soldiers right across the tracks. She got everybody alerted at the depot when the train's just sitting there with the wheels spinning. They, they finally caught and just went right up the line with Robert Buffum from Massachusetts in one of those uh, boxcars. I'll go to the next slide. All right, here's the uh, next stops on the map. The general heads north. You can see the circles that I have here, and we're going to visit these sites. They stopped uh, at Moon Station, sped through Alatoona, and s stopped at Etowah. James Andrews now was the uh, conductor of the train, and Robert Buffum from Massachusetts was one of the uh, one of the soldiers that were in the boxcar. Up the line they went. And we'll go to the next slide. Now they stopped at Moon Station. I can imagine they were, they were Union soldiers and they didn't have their uniforms on, so they're, they're spies. And of course, when they came down from Chattanooga, all they had, which was fine, they had their pistols in their, um, in, you know, stuck inside their belt. That's all they had. They don't have any tools or anything. So Andrews Raider stopped and they saw a uh, Confederate uh, repair crew at M Moon Station site. And that's the actual site there on the, uh, on the right. And they asked them, they said, hey, we're, we're heading north to uh, reinforce the Confederate Army in uh, Chattanooga. And do you mind if we borrow your crowbar? And they said, sure, take it. So they picked up a crowbar. At least I have one, one kind of a tool here. I'll show you what they use that later for. And the trains kept them spinning up the line north. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, here's a, your Confederate railroad crew. <laughs> They're standing on the depot, and here, here he sees his train going up the line. Now, Andrews, um, well, he was smart. He didn't, he didn't go fast. He went the same speed the normal engine would go because he wanted to keep the train on schedule. So when he went from depot to depot to depot, no one at those other depots would, would know the difference. They all had train schedules. And, you know, if a train was supposed to come in at a certain hour and a certain minutes, then they would say, okay, we know that train, let it go through, um, no problem. If he sped right off through all of them, it would alert everybody down, uh, down south in Georgia. So there's William Fuller, who was the Confederate Railroad crew. He was a conductor. Anthony Mur Murphy was the railroad for was actually a railroad foreman, very knowledgeable mechanic. And Jefferson Kane, the older fellow there on the right, was the locomotive engineer. Now they have no train. And Fuller said, "That is my responsibility." I mean, he he was very impassionate like that. So that's it. He told Anthony Murphy, "Follow me." <laughs> so. He starts, the train was only going slow because James Andrews wanted the train to kind of go slow. <laughs> so the three of them chased the train for two miles on foot. And of course, Andrews could look out and see them running after the train. And so it's, it's kind of an amazing story. We'll go to the next slide. And after two miles, <laughs> they found that same raid, road crew, right? At Moon Station, they stopped, and the, and the road crew would have what they call a push car. You can see that on the right. It's a car that the road crew would have, and they would go up and down the lines. They would uh, track, fix the tracks, uh, do maintenance uh, as needed. And uh, what they did is they convinced them to, to come and commandeer this uh, push car. And the three of them got on the push car and used this to go. A lot easier than running. So now they're going after a, uh, a train and a push car. <laughs> so we'll go to the next slide. And the general heads through Alatoona Pass. And this is actually the pass. It's actually, I was fortunate to get this picture here. That's, that's what it looked like um, back in 1862. So what I'm trying to do is take actual pictures, historical pictures, and put it all together for the story here to get, get a sense of what, what they're doing here over 200 miles behind enemy lines. And they sped right through what they call Alatuna Pass. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, uh, the Confederate crew under Fuller had this push cart, and they, and they 
came up to what they call Etowa Station. And th this was a uh, junction in the tracks where there was a huge ironworks, employed a lot of people, called the Cooper Ironworks. And of course, they made all kinds of iron repairs. They made railroad spikes, tracks, whatever you want, wanted to call. And in order to transport down, those down to the uh, different depots and stations, they had a very small train called the Yona. It's over there on the right. It's a small train. But believe me, it looked really great to this uh, crew that was running, trying to catch the train on the railroad tracks. <laughs> so they convinced the, them that they were chasing after uh, a bunch of Yankees that stole the train and uh, with no problem, they climbed aboard the Yona and now they got a small mo uh, locomotive and they're tracing the, uh, the general up heading north. And we'll go to the next slide. Now they crossed the Etowa Bridge and this is the picture of the bridge. The general crossed that bridge and you can get an idea. There's a lot of bridges here and these pictures are terrific. We'll go to the next slide. That's my favorite picture. That's, <laughs> I was taken in 1862, the time of the uh, locomotive chase. There's a general crossing the bridge, followed by the Yona, but the Yona was you know, far behind. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, what they tried to do here, they would stop, uh, the, uh, they would stop the general, Andrew would stop, and they would remove sections of railroad tracks to uh, hold them up. You can see on the right and the left there, they're pulling up the uh, railroad spikes. And uh, the right way to do it, of course, is to uh, pull up the uh, tracks, take all the, uh, the wood, and you can see that from the ties, pile, stack them up, put the tracks on top of them, start a fire, heat up the, the uh, tracks, and then on the, on the right, they would, people would bend them around the uh, telephone poles or the uh, telegraph pole, but they couldn't do that because they had to go real f fast. So basically they took the, the tracks up and they took the uh, sections of tracks and they just loaded them on their, uh, one of the box cars that continued up. So we're gonna continue on this story uh, in part three next week. It's really, uh, really an amazing story. And this, a lot of this is right in this book right here, Stealing the General. This is one incredible book. And of course, this other one here, I got at the um, historical site down in Georgia, the general, and that we'll be talking about the Texas. So this is episode two, Dave Norton from Discovering New England History. Have a good afternoon.